Chapter 6, we mainly are talking about what is called the originality. In vectors, and the simple way to check originality between vectors in Rn is to check the dot product between the vectors. If the dot product is zero, then the vectors is simply true. Okay. And then we want to talk about what is called the terminal projection. We have a vector y. Uh, vector U. We found the projection of Y onto U, the terminal projection, and we call it YF. Right? And we derive the formula for this YF, which is actually in the direction of U, so it is not to U, and we found this function as, remember? Y dot dot U over U dot U. So this guy is a scalar, so we get a scalar map of U, and this is a formal projection of Y onto the vector U. Okay? Today, inshallah, we will extend this concept uh, to find the projection of a vector onto a subspace, not onto a vector. Okay? And then do what is called the orthogonal decomposition of the vector as the sum of two vectors, one in the subspace and one orthogonal to the subspace. Then so view this guy as a projection of y over u, so we can write y as the sum of two vectors, y hat plus and we compose y as the sum of this guy, y hat, plus the difference between y and y hat. So we can write it this way. So this is in the direction of u, and this guy is orthogonal to right? So orthogonal to So we do the same when we have a subspace, and we compose the vector y as the sum of two vectors, one in the subspace and one the subspace. Uh, we will find the closest vector to the subspace that is closest to the vector. We have a vector like this. We want to find the closest vector to this guy in the subspace. Okay? Which is something we expect the orthogonal projection of this vector. And then we'll define the distance between the vector and the subspace. A measure for the distance between the vector and the subspace. That should be something, the distance between the vector and its projection onto the subspace. And then we we'll move on to find the thermal basis from a basis. And we have, uh, for example, we have two vectors in R2 that are uh, linearly independent, so they start R2. We'll see how to construct the orthogonal vectors from these guys to get uh, an orthogonal basis for your subspace. Uh, next lecture, I will continue telling what is called the dual factorization of the matrix. We did before actually LU factorization. We uh, do here what is called the QR factorization. And we use it uh, mainly to solve what is called the risk square solution, to find the risk square solution for uh, an over determinant system AX equal. We get back to this equation. Uh, this sign will solve the system. Uh, when you have over determinant system, you have many, many equations, but actually the system has no solution. So we'll find the best solution, the closest solution of all this equation. Yeah. And apply it actually in linear equation to find the best line, for example, that uh, best fits your data box. So let's start with a orthogonal projection. This is what we did in the previous lecture. We derived the equation for y hat. This guy, 
sometimes written projection of y or to n, where l is the span of the vector v. So this formula for this guy, the projection of y onto the span of v. So suppose now that I have a, a subspace and I want to find the projection of y onto this subspace. For example, suppose that this subspace is a plane in R3, okay? and you have a vector not in this plane. And you want to decompose this y as the sum of two vectors, one from the plane and one orthogonal to the plane. Okay? So we write it actually this way. Compose y as the sum of two vectors. y hat plus where y hat in the subspace. It's my own, it's my Why not in the subspace? Why some vector? And you have subspace? So we are talking in subspace. Subspace passing through the original vector passing through the original. Definition of the time. That's why it's not in the subspace. So I want it to decompose y into the sum of two components. One in the subspace and one orthogonal to the subspace. This guy is called y hat. Once you get this guy, you can find the other guy as one minus one. So we to prove the difference between y and y. This is my object. This is called the Z. So we say Y hat belongs to W and Z belongs to W curve, which is the perpendicular subspace of the W. How to find this Y hat path? How to find this Y hat? And the assumption. Assuming that w, that that is a subspace, or assume that you have some basis for the subspace, and not any basis. Suppose that the basis is orthogonal basis. I'm assuming that I have some vectors here in the plane, for example, that are orthogonal to each other. So we are talking about plane and R3. In general, assume that you have your one absolutely orthogonal basis for the subspace that. And you want to find y hat. As you see, y hat belongs to the subspace. So it can be written as linear combination between the bases of the subspace, right? So we can write y hat as so I can write y hat equal c1 u1. Use our orthogonal to each other. Form orthogonal basis for the subspace W. Orthogonal subspace W. Orthogonal basis for this W. So Y hat belongs to that. So it can be written as linear combination of the basis for W. How to get this is without reduction power and the reduction. Let's make use of the orthogonality. That I know that U1, U2, up to U are orthogonal to each other. So we can do the product with U1. So we get Y hat dot U1 for U1 one on series. So z1 goes to 2 equals 0, u1 goes to 3 equals 0, and so on. So we'll get expression for each coefficient. So z1 equal y hat goes to 1 over z1 goes to 1. So let's take these coefficients and substitute them to y hat. So y hat equal y hat goes to 1. Over u1 goes u1, u1. Plus, and so on. Y hat goes u2. 
Okay. What is the problem in this expression? Assuming that I know U's, I know the basis for the subspace, and I know the vector Y. The problem here is I don't know actually the vector Y hat. I want to get the vector Y hat. So let's find a way to replace y hat in the right hand side by a function L. So what we can do actually is to get this vector, which is y minus y hat, and we know that y minus y hat is orthogonal to this subspace. So it means that it's orthogonal to each vector in this subspace. So I can write y minus y hat, for example, dot u1 equal to z. So this vector is orthogonal to any vector in this subspace. So it would be orthogonal to all the bases. From this equation, you can get y dot u1 equal to so the dot product y hat dot u1. So we simply can rewrite this equation by replacing y hat with 1 by y with 1. So we move y hat to So if you have y and the orthogonal basis for the subspace, I can get the projection of y of the subspace here this basis. Once we get y hat, get the orthogonal component as y minus y. And y equal y hat? Can I show by geometry? How that expression on? Once we get this guy, we get the orthogonal component this way. Let's see an example. Suppose that I have the vector y and the, the subspace w, which is the span of these two vectors. You want to know? You can simply check that u1 and u2 are are so, Okay? So these guys are the basis for the span. So this is my value, the span of this vector which represents a plane in R3. So this is my subspace, some plane in R3. And you can simply check again that this y does not belong to the span of these guys. How to check? You try to write this vector as linear combination and so you get no solution. Which means that y does not belong to the span. Okay. So now I have vector does not belong to the plane. I want to get the projection of this vector onto the plane. So I do this expression to get the projection. You see from the graph. So this is the vector y, okay. and this is the vectors u1 uh, and vector u. These guys are orthogonal to each other, u1 and u. So we simply to get y hat, what I'm doing here actually, this guy represents the projection, projection of y onto u1. This is the expression of the projection. So we project y onto u1. We get this guy, which I call it y1 hat. Thus, we get y hat plus y2 hat, which is the projection of y onto u. So simply, y is the sum of two projections. One in the direction of u1 and the other in the direction of u. Some these guys to get the projection y. You can see this equation y to u1 equal y hat to u1, which means that the projection of y onto u1 equal to the projection of y hat onto u1 also. Yeah. So if you project y onto u1, you get this back. Project y hat onto u1, and you get again this uh, same This is what these guys are. 
the remaining part of the result needs to do the numerical calculations to get y. It's by the substitution of the rule. Until you get y. Once you get y hat, you can get the other component of the decomposition of y as the difference between y and y hat. So subtract y minus y hat, you get the red to z. As a check, conceptual check, to answer by checking the commonality between this guy and any of uh, any vector being top. So simply you can take this vector, do the lot product will be one, to be zero, to be two, must be zero. A problem. Simply you can check yourself by checking the commonality of this vector on these guys. Is it simple? So now you can project a vector onto a vector from the previous lecture and you compose the vector as the sum of two vectors, one in the direction and one of the Now you can project on a subspace and you compose again the vector as the sum of two vectors. Y hat plus okay. This is the same problem with different requirements. Giving you real y as a point and asking you to find the distance between uh, the point y and the subspace w, which is the span distance. It's actually the same problem. If I give you the point y. And I want to find the shortest distance between the point and the thing. So then simply get this vector y, which is the same as the point, and then do the orthogonal projection, which is y hat, and then find this vector, which is z, and the length of the vector z represents the distance between the point and the thing. We we'll do the same as the previous example. We get y hat first, and then find the vector z, and finally get the distance as the length of the vector z. Something? Let's see what is called the best approximation theory. Uh, let's define a subspace into Rn in general and a vector y in Rn. And let's see the meaning of this inequality. I have a subspace W okay, and a vector y in Rn. So I'm writing here. The length of the vector y minus y hat is less than the length of the vector y minus d, where d is any vector in the. Okay, let's see from the graph. Y hat is also not projection. So this is y, not necessarily in w. Yeah. And this is w. And this guy is y hat. Projection of y onto w. So what I'm saying here is the length of this vector, y minus y hat, is less than or equal the length of y minus v, where v is any vector in the Is it clear? So I said yeah, actually it's only y equal to y hat. So actually the meaning of this theorem is that the closest vector to y in W yes. is Y hat. It's orthogonal projection. This is the meaning of the thing. So actually, when we are going to solve the AX equal B later on, sometimes we we'll say that we find a solution if B is in the common space to create the matrix. Okay. If B is not in the common space, 
projection on column space بتاعي project on the column space find the closest B that is in the column space and find the solution that's what I learned to do later the proof that I have was the normal basis for the subspace that Let's rewrite the expression of the projection. Remember this expression for the projection. Assume that the vectors are not only orthogonal but are orthonormal, which means that they are orthogonal and of unit length. We have to each guy is one. What happens in this case? So assume that U1, U2, and U3 are total norms. So let's rewrite this equation if you know this equation. So Y hat would be Y of U1 times 1. But this guy actually is the length of the vector square. But this guy is not. So the equation is simplified to this guy. Okay. Let's try to write this guy in matrix 4. Let's define a matrix U containing U1, U2, and so on. Like that. And let's try to find this code. Let's find this code, U transpose 1. I'm going to find an expression for this guy in matrix. Okay? I'll derive it to U. So let's try to find U transpose 1. U transpose, we are going to transpose this matrix. So write these columns as rows. So it's the Y, 1 transpose, U transpose, and so on. Multiplied by the vector Y. What do we get? Get U1 transpose Y, U2 transpose Y, and so on. And actually, U transpose Y is a scalar, which is equivalent to equivalent to the product of my product. Okay, and the product has in matrix vector multiplication. That is one vector transpose time the other one. So this guy is something u1 dot y. U2 dot y and so on. So let's take this guy, which is u transpose y, and multiply it by the matrix root from that. U, U transpose 1. So I found here U transpose 1. Okay. Multiplied by the matrix U. Go ahead. Okay. U1, the vector U2, and so on. Multiplied by this guy. And let's do the multiplication. I have here some vectors. Here a vector multiply. So you take any a combination of these guys by these weights. So the first component would be y with u1 multiplied by u1 and y plus y with u2 multiplied by u2 and so on. So simply you can write this guy as y hat. So 
So I have can be obtained using this matrix multiplication. Mu, mu transpose one. Do this multiplication or the dissipation, which is what happens. So what does this guy do? You transpose one. Be the same as this guy, which is why. So if you have a matrix U containing meaning what? Basis together normal basis for the subspace that so we can get the product and get the projection by doing this matrix multiplication. U, okay, U transpose Y will get the same as this image. What happens if you do the opposite multiplication to multiply U transpose U? Transpose you. You multiply, you transpose, you are transpose, you put transpose, and so on. Y matrix, you containing Y and you can so on. Do this multiplication. I will put it on my website. Let's see. The first element would be you are transpose you are, which is one, because it's your effect. U1 transpose U2, zero, so they are equivalent. And so on. Here you get zero, one, right there, that's where I think. So when you have U transpose U by this vector, you get the same vector. But U, U transpose Y, you get the projection of the vector onto the subspace. Where the columns of U are orthonormal, orthonormal basis for this subspace. So, I to the So, I'm going to the So, the to the 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 Basis for certain subspace. I will tell you about the real open in a subspace plane that I go to vectors in R3. The matrix of the 3 by 2. It's a nice value from that board. You can add projection of kind of vectors. Orthonormal. Not confused with orthonormal, but orthonormal for expressions. Huh? Orthogonal and here I have the U1 with U1. And I'm doing one session with the normal matrix. That expression I can now be written as well. And the new U transpose Y at the back projection of Y onto the subspace W where U containing all the normal bases for this time. Summarize if I U U transpose Y and put now. Y hat and the projection. And I transpose U X by a vector X. What happens that Y is in W. What happens if Y is in W? What happens to the projection? It was zero. Projection. And the whole vector. And the whole vector. Zero. Oh, then it's zero. Vector zero. And then I will have a projection of y to that. You can go to one. Say what I have a projection. Now that I give you something, now you have orthogonal basis for the subspace. What happens if you don't have orthogonal basis? Can you construct orthogonal basis for this subspace? Let's see. Schmidt derived a way to find a, uh, an orthogonal basis for your subspace. So we'll start with a basis for the subspace, x1 up to xp in general, and do some uh, uh, 
process to find V1 up to V P that is an orthogonal set or orthogonal basis for this substance. How to find this orthogonal basis from the basis? Let's see. So since x1 up to x is a basis, means that we are linearly independent. independent. Uh, uh, there is no zero vector in the set. It's a basis. So it's a non zero vector set that is linearly independent. So assume that these guys are something like this x1, 2, 3. So I want to move the vector somehow to get orthogonal vectors. So let's try to move this guy, this guy somehow to get orthogonal vectors. Suppose first that I have x1 and x2 that are not orthogonal. And I want to construct a two orthogonal from these guys. So the process says that uh, let's first take v1, and I want to construct v1, v2, and so on. Take v1 as x1. Yeah. So v1 as x1. Now and instead of taking this guy, I'm going to project this guy onto x1, which is v1. Okay, and then subtract the vector minus its projection to get this vector which is orthogonal to v1. So uh, v2 is something x2 minus, minus uh, its projection onto v1. This is its projection onto V1, right? X2 dot V1 was around V1, V1. This is a projection of this guy onto V1. Do the subtraction to get the vector V2, which is this guy. Okay? So now I have V1 and V2 that are orthogonal. I want to replace it with V with another one. That is orthogonal to both v1 and v2. So the tail of v1 and v2 are in R3. So how to get a vector that is orthogonal to the tail of v1 and v2? Uh, subtract vector v minus its projection onto the plane containing these guys. So the projection of this guy onto the plane of v, x3 dot v1 over v1 to v1 v1 is the projection of this guy and similar for this guy sum these projections to get the projection of vector 3 onto the plane subtract this projection from vector 3 to get the orthogonal the third orthogonal now what are you going to have to approach v1 in general from rm rm is not a shape, geometry and shoot geometry in r3 we are in R4, R5. R3, R4, how to do the cross product? Determinant 4 by 4. Determinant 4 by 4, I think. That's a geometry 3 by 3. Oh, هو ما ملوش معنى انا عاوز كده هو مبقاش ليه معنى. Now, as before, I have x4 minus projection onto the first three v's. And if I back and subtract the projection onto the v's, not onto the x's. And this is a little confusing factor. The machine projection is a vector that I attack, no matter what octagonal parts. It's a parallel vector, a octagonal set. Let's see a medical example. These are three vectors. 
I'm asking you to find uh, orthogonal basis for R3 from these guys. You can set it, uh, verify that these vectors are linearly independent. I have determined the determinant, the sentence way is to check the determinant, because they are three vectors in R3. So the determinant is not Z. Now, if you look at the the you can put one vector linear combination of the other two. I replace it with right. So then I will be true. Octagonal reduction, as the calculator member, then a reduction. If I write three pebbles, if I write only the previous solution, plus one v one plus so we are linear. So this is a basis for R. I want to find all the normal basis for R. So let's first find the normal basis. And then do the normalization to get unit vectors to get the orthonormatives. So to get the orthonormal vectors, I'm going to substitute a Grange net process. Take V1 as x1, V1 equal x1, V2 equal x2 minus the projection of x2 onto V1. So x2 is 1 to 0, okay. and find this guy, x2 dot V1. Controller, 1 plus 3, 1 plus 2, over this guy is simply the length of v1 squared, which is 2. Multiply it by v1, so find this scalar, multiply it by v1, subtract x2 minus this projection. You end up by a vector that must be orthogonal to v1. So you can simply check as you proceed in the solution. So you get a vector, check that this guy is orthogonal to this guy. Put the dot product between these guys, it will be z. So proceed. Okay. So we have v1 now and v2 that are orthogonal, obtain the form x1 to 3. So what I have, v1 equal x1, this x2 is 3, and I obtain v2. I want to get V3, which is orthogonal to both V1 and V2. Yeah. So I'm going to take X3 minus, minus the uh, projection onto the previous piece, V1 and V2. Yeah. So X3 minus the projection onto V1 and V2. So step by step. Then you did a vector and again verify. This vector is orthogonal to V1 and V2. And now what about the product equal to 0? So now I have three vectors that are mutually orthogonal. So this guy forms an orthogonal basis for R. If you want to get orthonormal basis for R3 from these guys, and simply divide each vector by its left to get unit vectors. Right? So the length of this guy is root 2 divided by root 2. Right? And the normalization of this guy is simply 0, 0, 1. So the second vector you can simply scale before the normalization. So instead of writing the vector as negative half, half, zero, can write it as negative one, one, zero. So then normalize this guy. We simple the calculation. So the other vector for this guy is this one. Okay. What I did is not scale this vector, I multiply by two and then scale it to get the other vector. So now you have orthonormal basis for R3. So if you get back to the problem of projection, if you have a vector want to project it onto a subspace, you need orthogonal basis for this subspace to do the projection. So if you don't have an orthogonal basis, you have to do Gramsci process first to get orthogonal basis and then do the projection. Yeah. 
This is another example in GraveSchmen. I'll show you the final answer and I need your comment about the numbers. Let's first check. Will these form a uh, basis for R3? <laughs> Check the return, multiple to zero is a basis. How to construct orthogonal basis? Gram This is the result of Gram Schmidt. I need your comment about the uh, answer. We want to three and the relation with x1 to three. x three equal v three. V1 and V3 are beyond the one equal X1. That was the fair question. Did V1 and V3 in your final order? Yeah, you can. One thing I can tell you is that the KDN of 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 the KDN Ah, which means by x1 is to the last one, three okay. vectors, yeah. one or two which are orthogonal, that's the three orthogonal and any one of the I think that. Any one of the other ones, but yeah, then let us try and let us try. Then we have to do it. 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 Ich bin der Bayern, 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 ich bin der هو هو انا كده كاني بعمل اي جي سي ولاد يعني اه انا بقى يعني لو اورثونورمال كانك بتطلع ثلاثه اورثونورمال بس مش لازم يكونوا مستحيل يعني ده حاجه اه كانك عامل سامبليشن بس ليه بقى عشان على بروجكت عليهم يعني ده انا هبقى مجبر عليهم ليه انا دايما الكونس بتاع الماتريكس ايه اللي انا بصوب عليها هي اكس ايكوال تي انا لازم على بروجكت على الكونس بتاع الكونس بيس بتاعي مضطر اشتغل على الكونس دي مش على اي جي كي نشوف بقى الكلام ده ايه بيتشرح بيها ان شاء الله نعمل بقى فاكتورايزيشن للماتريكس دوال فاكتورايزيشن بس عندنا نص